good evening everyone uh, welcome back to another guest speaker session from innovative astro solutions so first of all uh, happy new year 2023 to everyone we had a very wonderful 2022 uh, for in our learning academy uh, we had many wonderful uh, speakers like dignitaries having different topics uh, on the session so it was a really a great uh, learning for all of us so we are starting 2023 with a very special guest uh, sri niranjan babu a world renowned uh, vastu and astrology consultant he is none other than the son of dr bv raman like who is considered as the pitamaka of uh, modern astrology and uh, Niranjan Babu is also a chief editor of Astrological E magazine, uh, which is one of the pioneering magazine in the field of astrology. He is also the chairman of Raman and Rajeshwari Foundation. So Niranjan Babu is a master at combining the ancient science of Vastu and Jyotisha with an intelligent grasp of modern conditions. He is the Vastu advisor to Sri Dharmasthala Manjunadeshwara Dharmodra Trust. Which, you which maintains the and manages a large number of uh, well-known temples in India. And uh, it is a great honor to have you here, sir. And uh, your father, B.V. Raman, is really an inspiration to many of the modern-day astrologers. And I am really happy to say that I am one among them. So I am really thankful to you and your family for all the services you do to the field of astrology. So thank you again for accepting my invitation. Uh, so I am really overwhelmed over by the audience and your... Uh, uh, participation. So thank you again. Uh, so before I hand over the session to uh, Niranjan Babu, uh, for the audience, uh, please be on mute. Uh, I don't want to the uh, presentation to get uh, disturbed. And if you have any questions, you can log into slido.com and use the passcode 39308941. You can log in all your questions. So questions will automatically come here. And after the end of the presentation, uh, Sar will take the one after the other. And he will try to answer all the questions as best of his possibility. So thank you again, sir, uh, for accepting this. And uh, let me stop my presentation and uh, you can take it from here. Thank you so much. Well, very kind of you. I'm happy that uh, uh, you see Muttu Vijayan Elango of the Innovative Astro Solutions. I've been a reader of my father's book, my father, Dr. B.V. Raman's books. And I also understand from you that your father also, you know, uh, was going through my father's books. So very nice of you and thank you for inviting me. Uh, for the first class of uh, uh, 2023, and uh, let me wish all of you a very happy new year. And let me also wish you a very happy uh, upcoming Ugadi year. So, my first, uh, my primary gurus are my parents, <coughs> Dr. B.V. Raman and my mother, Mrs. Rajesh Vijay Raman. Dr. B.V. Raman, of course, all of you know, you know, he was one of the world's greatest scholars of Jyotisha the world ever had. And, uh, you know, he has about 40 titles under his pen. Uh, and uh, he, of course, his contribution to the world of astrology, you know, it cannot be uh, described in a few words. It is colossal. At the same time, my mother was a great yoga teacher who lived with father. And uh, she was a teacher for over 50 years. And one of her most outstanding students was uh, the great classical uh, musician, uh, M.S. Subalakshmi. So I also need to pay my reverential pronouns to my great grandfather, uh, uh, Professor Sur Narayanda. He was the founder of the astrological magazine in 1895, 127 years ago, which I am now continuing as the astrological e-magazine since you know, we also put it online and it uh, reaches about 39 countries. And uh, of course, uh, uh, my uh, gratitude to my lineage uh, because of them, you know, we were able to continue you know, to propagate the uh, subject of astrology and related sciences properly. And uh, most important, yesterday was his birthday, Ratha Saptami. My, uh, my great-grandfather's birthday was yesterday. So on that occasion, you know, I also need to remember my father, the Bhishma Pitamaha of Jyotisha, and uh, who edited, in fact, the astrological magazine for over 62 years, something, you know, no one has ever done that way. 
and I'm glad that I'm able to continue the magazine. And uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you all. For, of course, thank you all for being with me today. Our magazine, I, I put this small slide here. Our uh, next issue, which is to do with the February month, is on Guru Chandali Yoga. So if, uh, if it's not uh, impossible for all of you, I think you know you should uh, try to get this soft copy from the uh, you go to astrologicalmagazine.com. You can uh, you know get the link there. It is we have several authors writing on Guru Chandala Yoga, which is I think uh, you know starting somewhere in the third uh, third or fourth week of April, and uh, Guru is entering Mesha, the house of Aries, and then you know where Rahu is already positive. So when they come together, what happens to Guru? Will the Guru's uh, you know uh, wisdom go for a toss? All that you know. Several articles have come by different contributors, including me. You probably you know you can uh, uh, later uh, go to uh, go to the website and uh, buy the copy. I'll be happy with that. Before I go into the subject proper, I just want to give you some simple uh, traditional guidelines. Uh, all of you will see, basically Vastu is a way of life. So way of life means from morning as you get up, you know, until uh, evening when you go, until night when you go to bed, you know, whatever you do, that is to do with Vastu. So what I would suggest, I've given you a simple uh, few guidelines. One is, you know, you drink water as soon as you get up, stored overnight in a copper vessel, which I have been doing, which my father also was doing, and later, uh, earlier his uh, parents also were doing, you know. That, you know, keeps your health good. Go for a morning walk. That is very important because basically sun is important for all of us. Go for a morning morning walk. Take in the healing energies of the sun and recite or listen to Aditya Hridayam Stotram. I mean, uh, some people, you know, they know, they, uh, some seniors uh, that are sitting here for the class, you know, they probably will know the Aditya Hridayam. Some others may not know the Aditya Hridayam. Tato yuddha parishrantam samare chintyastitam ravanam chagrato drushkva yuddha samapastitam. It comes like that. So uh, that's available in YouTube by Shastri. Different, of course, different people have uh, recited that, but these uh, Shastri brothers have recited it very well. So, you know, you can make a note of that. Go for a morning walk and listen to the, uh, while on the walk, you know, you can uh, listen to the Adi Chifidium. Then every night before you go to bed, you know, have a quarter spoon of turmeric. And then as soon as you get up, you have another quarter spoon of turmeric uh, put on your tongue for a few minutes. It automatically, you know, it will mix with the saliva and go inside. This is definitely good for keeping your lungs clean and strong. And then, of course, these are traditional guidelines that I'm giving, you know, prepare food only after bath. Today, what happens is, you know, because of the uh, various uh, involvements of both the husband and wife, uh, all the work they try to do in the morning and then later on, you know, have 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock after their food, in fact, they try to have their bath. So many of them, you know, they, they do not have bath. So when you're uh, practicing Jyotisha and uh, Vastu Shastra, certain, you know, uh, guidelines you know, definitely need to be followed for you to uh, you know when you give predictions for your predictions to come proper and all that it is necessary that you you, uh, you lead a certain way of life also so one of that you know like i said you know uh, have your uh, food prepared and eaten after your bath many people they prepare the food before and then you know after uh, eating they have their bath so don't do that way then eat vegetarian food. See, when I speak of this vegetarian food, uh, when it's, it's very much necessary for astrologers and uh, Vastu people. Uh, we, uh, when when you speak of uh, meat, meat is a product of uh, 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 salmon and egg, whereas you know vegetables are a product of uh, the Panchabhutas. So why be a cannibal, you know, and eat you know uh, slain animals and all that? Be a vegetarian, and that way, you know, your thinking also will become better. You'll uh, you'll become more sattvic, and for Jyotisha and Vastu, the sattvic nature is very important. That way, you know, you'll be able to give the necessary guidance to your uh, friends and uh, family and clients or whoever it is, you know, properly. Keep your hands and feet very uh, clean, always clean. So this we have already all always followed as uh, you know most Indians follow this. Only today, because of the uh, uh, Western culture, you know, seeping into our, uh, our, our areas, we, we, we've forgotten all that. Uh, so that is what, you know, I would always say, uh, ask you to wash your feet and, uh, you know, go inside the home. 
then built with a namaste namaste when you built with a namaste you know you are actually you know completing the circuit of the the body aura that gets stronger and you know your thinking process and your uh, life also you know that uh, gets better so avoid hugging you know i find that uh, you know a lot of people go on hugging each other stop shaking hands because each of us we have an aura around us and that aura uh, has to be strengthened not weakened so avoid hugging and uh, stop shaking hands do the namaste uh, that that will be good one final thing that i want to tell you is when you go to bed always listen to vishnu sahasranama vishnu is the deity for mercury mercury is the planet of intelligence finance and uh, speech and such other things so when you, when you go to bed i'm not asking you to listen and then go to bed when you go to bed just play the vishnu sahasranama preferably by ms subalakshmi and then you know at minimal volume at minimal volume so it does not disturb the other people and then then uh, go to sleep even uh, in between if you, you know half uh, half a through it's of you go to sleep it doesn't matter uh, it will you know not only cleanse you outside but it also cleanse you your brain inside you know your intelligence and your memory power all these things will uh, improve so this is not necessarily for you who is listening maybe you know you can uh, apply the same to your family members also now uh certain mantras also uh, before going to the subject particularly for us you know who are trying to learn jyotish and vastu certain mantras are necessary one of course for jyotish the navagraha mantras are very important the navagraha mantras most of you will know uh, for each uh, planet you know we have a different mantra but the general uh, mantra is namas suryaaya chandraaya mangalaaya budhaaya cha guru shukra shane byascha rahuve ketuve namaha you know that is one thing that you can recite and then uh, the ganesha mantra is very important ganesha and the guru are very important i mean you have so many gurus right from birth you know your parents are the first gurus then you have other gurus who are in your school college and uh, you know your interaction with people a lot of people you know they give their ideas they also become gurus so these two mantras are very important om gam ganapate namaha om shri satguru pyo namaha so so whoever is your satguru you know the sadguru begins right from the parents uh, when you are born and then you know the rest of the people who over a period of time who give you all the guidance they become your sadguru uh, <clears throat> so this is these two mantras you should recite and then uh, the youngsters particularly you know, who are planning for a better uh, future better profession and you know to plan to travel abroad uh, all these uh, things I mean, the uh, youngsters were trying to you know uh, do better in their lives for them this mantra is a very powerful mantra om namo hanumate namaha shri ram raksha so uh, hanuman you know the mantra gets strength only when you say the ram raksha so when you say, when you say shri ram raksha hanuman is you know happy he will come and you know give you the guidance particularly for students i would recommend this mantra regularly then this is one mantra which creates lot of harmony i find that in many families the harmony factor is lost between parents and the children between husband and wife between brothers and the sisters and with the brothers and brothers so the harmony many a time you know it's lost you know this particular mantra uh, continuously done uh, i mean of course morning in fact uh, one of these uh, uh, slokas the when we recite it says uh, ekakale patenichyam mahapapa vinashanam dvikale patenichyam dhana dhanya samanvitah trikale patenichyam mahashatru vinashanam so that means three times of the day when you do the mantra becomes most powerful that is sunrise noon and sunset not i'm saying not saying uh, you know in the night sunset sunset these are the trikales so this particular uh, mantra uh i have found you know that it creates lot of harmony between couples or between parents and children between uh, brothers and sisters and all that om shreem and uh, so you can also make a note of that it is not shri it is shreem the bijakshara comes om shreem lakshmi narayanaya namaha so this is one thing that you can recite <clears throat> now we'll come to the subject proper vastu shastra you know is a science that can be applied to lot of things it could be for the temples it could be for the residences it could be for the layouts it could be for the corporate buildings and you know it could be for very varied other things even it could be for one single room also 
the, the particular room also, you know, the rust can be applied. <clears throat> so since we are, since I am, uh, you know, born in a family of astrological scholars, we are, in a, in a way, when you check my, look into my profile, I am the 15th in lineage. So that way, all through, you know, we have been in this Jyotisha field for 15 generations. So will I say something a little about, I'm not going to details, just the simple things I'm giving. So what is Jyotish Shastra? What is Vastu Shastra? So I mean, normally when Jyotisha, we say we normally think of this uh, uh, plan, uh, this chart, you know, that I uh, put here. And then we, when we speak of Vastu Shastra, we, uh, we look into the home. Jyotish Shastra is time personified. Whereas Vastu Shastra is space personified. So in Jyotisha, time becomes very important. Vastu Shastra, space becomes important. So let's see what is a, it is personified as what? Jyotisha personifies time as Kala Purusha. Vastu Shastra personifies time as Vastu Purusha. So one is the Kala Purusha, as far as Jyotisha is concerned. As far as the Vastu is concerned, it is Vastu Purusha. We are personifying space and uh, creating the Vastu Purusha. <clears throat> so let's see what are the various definitions that are there for what uh, Vastu Shastra. One or two definitions probably I'll uh, give you. Uh, <clears throat> it is the science of architecture. To be precise, it is the science of Indian architecture. And it is called Stapatya Veda. Stapati is the architect. Stapatya is knowledge of Veda, knowledge of architecture, that is Stapatya Veda. Veda is knowledge, so that's how you have to take. <clears throat> then, it is also called the science of dwellings, because, you know, we primarily look into how the orientation has to be there, how, how, what the measurements have to be, all these things we look into. So it is the science of dwellings. Vasiti, iti, vastu. So wherever you dwell, that becomes the vastu. Then it is also, I was, if you look into this small uh, chart where I have divided uh, one area into nine parts, and uh, I have identified you know uh, the four cardinal directions. If you can see my cursor here, if you can see my cursor. These cardinal directions are north, east, south, and west. So when you speak of that, you know, the four Vedas, Rug Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda, they are identified, you know, as the cardinal directions. And the corner directions are, corner directions and the central direction are identified with the Panchabhutas. That is the primary element. So this is also called the Panchabhuta Shastra. Northeast is identified with water or Udaka. Southeast is identified with fire or Agni. Southwest is uh, identified with space or Gagana. Northwest is identified with uh, air or Vayu. So that way, and of course, the central area is uh, identified with the Brahmasthana. And the Brahmasthana, the primary element is Earth. So all the five primary Panchabhutas, you know, they're identified in several, uh, uh, several places. So this is one thing that you should keep in mind. And uh, we, let's see what we have in the next uh, slide. So let, let's try to also arrange. So now pe people say Vastu Shastra was not there overnight. It has come, and then people are talking about that and all that. Some all random statements go on coming. So let's check how old could the Vastu Shastra be? 50 years, 500 years, 5000 years, or more? When we speak of Vastu Shastra, we have references in the Ramayana and the Mahabharata also. If those of you who know, have uh, read the Ramana and Mahabharata, you would have seen that the references of Vastu Shastra in terms of construction, in terms of orientation of the buildings and all that is mentioned long, long back. So the uh, Ramana and Mahabharata, they, they relate to the, uh, the four, there are four yugas, Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga and Kali Yuga. So Ramana and Mahabharata relate to the Treta and the Dwapara, we are now in the Kali Yuga. So again, checking on the Actually, if you go on carefully checking on the uh, age of these uh, yugas, there are four yugas. The Satya Yuga is 17,28,000 years. The Treta Yuga is 12,96,000 years. Dwapara, 
Yuga is 8,64,000 years. So Treta was the Ramayana, Dwapara was the Mahabharata time. And then we have Kali Yuga, which has begun, which, that is, you know, 4,32,000 years. And basically, you know, from uh, what we can gather, Kali Yuga has begun about 5,020 years back, 5,000, 5, roughly 5,000, you can say, 5,000 years back. We saw we will still have so many thousands of years uh, for the Kali Yuga also. So that way, what I'm trying to say is, I'm say when I uh, when we add up all these things, uh, Satya, Treta, Dwapara, and Kala, uh, Kali Yuga, the Maha Yuga totals to 43 lakhs 20 thousand years. So when you're speaking of the Treta and the Dwapara Yuga, when uh, Vastu Shastra was there, you can imagine the number of years you know it dates back. So you cannot dismiss how Vastu is there, you know, uh, since uh, 10 years, 15 years, 20. Some people you know go on speaking like that. It has been there. In fact, if you carefully observe, temples built thousands of years back, even, you know, they, they have withstood the onslaught of time. All these uh, tsunamis and, you know, earthquakes and all these things, they still withstood. Whereas modern, uh, you know, structurally designed buildings over a period of 50 years or 100 years, they have collapsed. So we were very, we were very conversant with the engineering aspects of a structure. We were not just building walls and, you know, randomly building that. That way, this Vastu Shastra, uh, based on this, you, know, you can imagine how old it is. Are Jyotisha and Vastu Shastra related? Many of the people, they ask me you know, whether it's related. So Jyotisha is a Vedanga. So Vedanga means it's a limb of the Jyoti, a limb of the Vedas. The four Vedas are there, it's a limb of the Veda. And normally they say it's the uh, Rug Veda. Then Vastu Shastra is a Upaveda. Upaveda is a minor Veda. So just like you know, there are different Vedas are there. There's the minor Veda. The Vastu Shastra is also is a minor Veda. So both are related to the Vedas. <clears throat> so Jyotisha speaks of nine nine important gets the nine Navagrahas get the importance. Seven plus two planets. You know, seven grahas and two nodes are there. Rahu and Ketu. So it speaks of uh, nine planets. Vastu Shastra speaks of nine directions. Eight plus one, you know, the eight, uh, the, just now I showed you the eight directions spread the, the central area, which is the Brahmasthana and the cosmos. It goes to the top. So that is one more direction. So you have nine directions there. So there is some connection, whether it's Jyotisha, Vastu Shastra, in terms of, you know, their similarities, there are a lot of similarities there. One thing uh, I want to say, because we are all students of uh, trying to learn Vastu Shastra, don't segregate Vastu Shastra and uh, Jyotish Shastra. Try to work you know, on the Vastu Shastra with reference to the, the Dasha Bhaktis, the transits and such things of the horoscope also, so that you know, you'll be able to get a better picture of whatever you try to do. So what, uh, what I'm trying to say is Jyotisha and Vastu Shastra are interrelated and interdependent. So while Jyotisha helps you to plan your life, I mean, you look into a horoscope and then I would say, okay, this is the Dasha Bhakti, the, uh, the Bhakti Lord is in the fourth, the Dasha Lord is in the seventh. So you try to interpret that way. You get the picture there. So when you, uh, you try to plan something, you know, that plan that you're trying to put, Vastu Shastra helps you to put the plan into practical action. So this, so both are, uh, Jyotisha and Vastu Shastra get related. Jyotisha helps you to plan Whereas Vastu Shastra helps you to put this into practical action. Another thing uh, that I've learned is from my father, uh, Muhurta. If you go through Muhurta, many of you may have gone, but probably uh, all of you, most of you will have gone through that Muhurta if you are students of astrology. There, you know, father has identified each nakshatra which, uh, with a particular animal. So the list is here. Uh, uh, yeah, some of you can either click it or, you know, I think tomorrow it will be also available on YouTube. So that way, you know, you can take a look there also. So there's different uh, uh, animals that are given on the right column. All these are indicated. Ashwini, for instance, Ashwini, Shatubisha, horse, like that, you know, different are there. I will not uh, read out everything. You can make a note. Uh, now, you know, I'm trying to give the actual uh, figures of that. When we speak of, uh, you know, the horses, we speak of uh, Aditya. Uh, the, he, the, so the sun is always depicted, you know, with the seven horses. So that way, so sun becomes, so for somebody, you know, who does not want to 
make use of the animal thing, you know, for him, sun becomes important. So for Ashwini and Shatabisha, even though it is the Shatabisha is the sign of Saturn, sun becomes very important for these two uh, nakshatras. So that means for them, their daily work, exposure to the sun, Aditya Shudhyam, reciting the Aditya Shudhyam and all these things are very important. Similarly, when you go to for Barney and Revati, you have Ganesha, you have the elephant. Elephant is the Ganesha, so Ganesha prayer is definitely good for them. And then uh, as far as uh, Pusha and Kritika are concerned, uh, you have the goat or the uh, sheep, whatever you call it. So that is uh, the uh, deity involved is Kartikeya, Subramanya. For Rohini and Mugashira, it is the snake. So the snake means, you know, when you speak of the snake, you know, you speak of Lord Vishnu automatically. So Lord Vishnu becomes important. Then uh, we have the uh, the uh, uh, dog is there. When you have the dog, you know, we speak of Dattatreya. If you carefully look at the photograph of Dattatreya, he is always four dogs with him. The four Vedas are there with him. So the when you speak of uh, the, the relevant deity becomes Dattatreya. And then when you look into the uh, uh, Asklesha and Punarvasi, Punarvasu, yeah, the, uh, the animal depicted is cat, and the goddess that is in, uh, indicated for cat is uh, goddess Shashti, and she is supposed to be the goddess of fertility. So particularly you know, when uh, in times of, you know, um, uh, try, trying uh, for progeny and all that, this particular uh, goddess, this particular uh, animal symbol becomes important. And primarily, you know, this is to do with Aslesha and Punarvasu. <clears throat> then we have uh, uh, the mouse. Mouse is true for uh, Maga and uh, Puru Palgani. And when you speak of the mouse, naturally we speak of Ganesha only. So Ganesha becomes important for these two nakshatras. Then we go for uh, Uttara Palgani, Uttara Badra. It is the cow, that is the symbol is cow. For, Kiva, for the cow, you know, it is Lord Krishna, uh, Lord Krishna, the baby Krishna, all, you know, for him the cow becomes very important. Then for Swati and Hasta, we have the Nandi, uh, so we have, sorry, we have the Bullock, uh, uh, Bullock, so it means, you know, Nandi is important. When Nandi is important, automatically Shiva becomes important. So, uh, uh, prayer to Lord Shiva, uh, on a regular note, we know, is always Raksha for Swati and Hasta. Now, when we go for uh, Vishaka and Chitra, or Chitta Nakshatra, whatever you call, the tiger becomes important. The, for the tiger, the goddess is Durga. So Durga, you know, becomes important. In fact, when you speak of Durga, some people, uh, they, they would be already reciting the Durga Saptashati. Particularly, one sloka is there, which is very important. They can do, I mean, many of you cannot recite the entire uh, Durga Saptashati. This particular Durga sloka is good. And primarily for Vishaka and Chitta, it would know, become some, some sort of a necessity for them to recite. Sarva Bada Vinir Mukto Dhanadanya Samanvitaha Manushyo Mat Prasadena Bhavishyati Na Samshayaha. So this is the sloka from the Durga Saptashati, which you know, uh, you, you can recite. Primarily, you know, I, what I feel is uh, Relevant uh, nakshatras that are indicated uh, for them, you know, for them, it, this is very important. For the others also, it is good. Any prayer is good for everyone. But for these particular nakshatras and the particular the details that I am referring to, you know, that becomes very important. For instance, Uttara Palguni, Uttara Bhadra, when I say Krishna, you know, any Krishna prayer is good. And uh, the simple, uh, simplest uh, Krishna prayer is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And that can be recited. Similarly, for Jeshta and Anuradha, you know, which is to do with uh, uh, rabbit, uh, rabbit or a hare, whatever you call, for that, you know, uh, uh, this is particularly the baby Krishna. He was primarily interested with rabbits and such as small, small animals. So Lord Krishna's mantra even here is uh, important. And then, of course, when we go for Purva, Shada and Shravana Nakshatra, we have uh, the animal symbol is Hanuma, is a, is a monkey. When you speak of a monkey, it means, you know, the relevant god is Hanuman. And I already earlier itself, I told you, Om Namo Hanumate Namaha Shri Rama Daksha. And then it's always better you also add Shri Sadguru Pyo Namaha. It's always good. And there are a lot of other uh, uh, Hanuman mantras, including the Hanuman Chalisa. Some people even recite that. So, you know, particularly Purvashada and Shravana nakshatra people, 
for them this uh, Hanuman Chalice and Hanuman Mantras are very important. Then finally, we have got Purva, Bhadra and Dhanishta, for which you know the lion becomes important. When you speak of lion, then Narsimha becomes important. So the prayer to Narsimha, Lord Narsimha, and uh, definitely is good for the uh, uh, Nakshatras, Purva, Bhadra and Dhanishta. See, when I'm speaking of Vastu Mechanical, I already told you, I'm not going to just speak about, you know, uh, 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 kitchen and bathrooms and bedrooms and such things. And I'm recite basically Vastu Shastra is a way of life. So in a way of life means Jyotisha also comes into play. When Jyotisha comes into play, these things particularly, I you know, advise many hundreds of people I've addressed and they have been benefited. Simple things like this, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I mean, if you take a look at the bottom, these symbols can be used at home or office by way of wall hanging, statues, objects, etc. So I was uh, now, you know, Uttra Shada is one I left over. Uttra Shada, it is the mongoose. Mongoose, you know, uh, when you say, take a look at Kubera's uh, photograph, invariably the mongoose is always there. So Kubera becomes important. And Kubera with Lakshmi is definitely very good. So that becomes important for the Uttra Shada born. And uh, in the, these days, uh, the younger uh, uh, generation, mechanically, they weren't putting tattoos all over the body, all uh, irrelevant tattoos they weren't putting. No? For them, instead of putting them random you know, with whatever is relevant to their nakshatra, you know, that particular uh, uh, tattoo in terms of the animal or in terms of the deity they put, that is good. Then we have... Uh, uh, the directions, I'm relating everything, you know, the astro astrology and the Vastu Shastra, I'm relating. Directions, planets, and Vastu Lordships. So, planetary Lordships and Vastu Lordships are there. When you speak of North, Mercury becomes important. And for Mercury, uh, the Vastu Lord is Kubera. For North, the, uh, the Vastu Lord is Kubera, who is the god of wealth. So, when I'm uh, speaking about this, it is necessary that you try to have the natural energy coming from the north always. Then we have northeast. Northeast is Ishanya. And then when you speak of Ishanya, it is Jupiter. And Jupiter and the Vastu Lord, you know, is the Supreme Lord Isha. We call him Isha or Shiva, we call him. So, Isha is the Supreme Lord. Then uh, when it comes to the uh, direction east, naturally it is sun. And then, the, as far as the Vastu Lordship is concerned, they have identified that with Indra, the king of heaven. Then, southeast, the planet concerned is Venus, Shukra, and uh, the Vastu Lordship is Agni or the fire god. Coming to south or Dakshina, it is Mars, Mangal, and then uh, the, Vastu, the planet uh, is uh, Mars. The Vastu Lordship, you know, is Yama or god of death. So Yama means now don't uh, get uh, scared, you know, it does not mean that it's only death. Huh? It is, you know, you can uh, interpret that as emancipation. Then when we come to Southwest, it is Rahu, the planetary lord is the Rahu. And uh, the Vastu lordship is by uh, Demoness called Nairuji. On the West, when we come to West, you know, the ruler is Saturn, the planetary ruler is Saturn, and the Vastu ruler is Varuna or the ocean god. Then as far as Northwest is concerned, the planetary lord is Moon, uh, and then uh, the Vastu lord is Vayu or Wind God. <clears throat> then, you know, you try to understand, when you try to understand these particular planets and their significations and Guna, Guna and all that, you know, uh, suppose, you know, one particular aspect of this uh, Guna, uh, the significations and uh, uh, that, that you're looking into, you know, is uh, sort of bothering in your home. Maybe, you know, that, that particular uh, direction can be set right. And since I'm speaking of Vastu, that particular direction related to that particular signification can be set right. You can check whether, you know, that north is uh, properly done or not done, or whatever you need to do, for instance, open something like that. So we'll begin with east. East, uh, you know, the plant is sun. And the significations uh, stand for soul, father, magnetism, royalty, dignity, courage. It is a it is sattva guna. Then uh, when we come to uh, northwest, it is moon. Moon is mind, mother, water, women, femininity. It's a sattva guna, sattva. Then we have the south. When you speak of south, uh, the the planetary lord is Mars. Mass, uh, you know, uh, significations are siblings, 
endurance, assertive, being assertive, being aggressive. Mass is both. Being assertive is one thing, being aggressive is another thing. Then, you know, as far as professional is concerned, surgeons. And then it is Thomas Iguna. Then when I come to North, it is Mercury. Mercury is very important for every one of us. Intellect, trading, dexterity, finances, creativity, ledgers. So even for the children, you know, this uh, creativity is very important. The intellect is very important. So for them also, North becomes very important. Then we have Northeast, which is Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter refers to Vedas, knowledge, guru, wealth, progeny, dignity. You see, in fact, it also signifies uh, the, the progeny. Uh, so if Northeast is taken care of, you know, the progeny is uh, the relationship factors between the progeny or, you know, uh, uh, when uh, the children get married, you know, the, the, the likelihood of having the progeny and all is seen there. Then we come to Southeast, which is to do Venus. And uh, uh, the significations of politics, romance, pleasure, happiness, spouse, grace, this is the Rajas Guna. Then finally, we come to West, which is to do with Saturn. Saturn is stubborn, servile, impediments, sorrows, injuries, dull, pessimistic. So, Tamas, Tamas Guna. So, that way, so Saturn's basic nature is like that. So, sometimes, you know, some ch children, you know, whatever you try to tell them, they do not understand. You know, they, they, do, do, they don't want to understand. You know, they're very stubborn and all that. And then uh, they also they have some pessimistic ideas and all that. At that point of time, you should look into the west uh, part of your house and see, you know, what could be done there. So, uh, in fact, when I speak of west, they also said, you know, Paschima Pushti Vardhanam. So, the strength should be there on the west. So, it's when you have that uh, uh, strength created on the west, probably the children also will become better. They'll become more optimistic and uh, they become less uh, stubborn. Then we have uh, <coughs> the desert, the planet, there's what is called the planetary kingdom. When you speak of East, you're speaking of Sun. Sun is the king, the planetary kingdom. Sun is the king. Moon is the queen involving Northwest. Mars is commander in chief, that is South. Mercury is prince or heir apparent, that is to do with North. Jupiter is advisor or prime minister to, to do with Northeast. Southeast, Venus is to do with advisor, prime minister to do with Southeast. So both are Acharyas. Jupiter is an Acharya, he is a Deva Guru. Venus is an Acharya, he is an Ashuru Guru. So that way, you know, the material aspects, uh, Venus, uh, when you speak of Venus, Southeast, and the material aspects come into the picture. When you speak of uh, Jupiter, Northeast, you know, the uh, Satvic Guna aspects come into the picture. I've also you know, so I've given a small table, you know, many people are ignorant of this. And I'm not saying you buy all this uh, and wear it, I'm not saying that. But in case any anyone, you know, somebody uh, advises, you just, you know, then take a look at this table and then based on that, you can uh, go for the purchase. Sun is to do with Ruby, Manikya. Moon is Mukta or Pearl. Mars is Pravada or Red Coral, Red Coral. Uh, Mercury is Marakata or Emerald. Jupiter is Pushparaga or Yellow Sapphire. Venus is Vajra or Diamond. Saturn is Blue Sapphire, Neela. Rahu, Hesonite, Gomeda. Ketu, Cat's Eye, Viduria. Here, one thing I want to tell you. As much as possible, try to avoid you know, wearing diamond. Because invariably, I find wearing diamond over a period of time, initially some positive results will come, but over a period of time, you know, it will uh, create a lot of disturbance in the family. So I'll try to avoid, uh, uh, min try to mi minimize on the use of diamond. <clears throat> then we come into this Vastu uh, Purusha. The Vastu Purusha, if you carefully observe, is uh, lying. I'm uh, speaking of this Tira Vastu, there are different other Vastas, which I will not go into that. Nitya Vastu and all that is there, we will not go into that. This is Tira Vastu. In the Tira Vastu position, the Vastu Purusha is lying face down uh, with his uh, head to the northeast. So any, any site, you know, when you uh, look into, the northeast aspect of that site, you know, is relevant to the uh, Vastu Purusha's head. So northeast is to do with Vastu Purusha's head means it is the brain. 
the thinking aspects, the, uh, the the proper thinking, the proper communication, proper expression, all that you know is to do with northeast. So as a rule, try to keep the northeast always clean. And they also said northeast is Ishanya. Ishanya means space of God. The space of God has to be clear. In every room, you just walk into every room and then say, look into the northeast. And then when you look into the northeast, see that you know your trash cans or some you know. Uh, uh, dumping uh, dump, uh, dump uh, you know, has put there and all that. So, uh, just uh, so take care of that, and uh, you know that becomes uh, uh, Ishanya. The Ishanya aspect, you know, gets stronger there. Then, uh, as far as uh, you see the lower part of the body, that that is the strength area where you walk and you sit and all that. The strength area, you know, below the navel, that is in the southwest. That's the, the so southwest is the strength area. Uh, so you go to the south, the strength area is the southwest area, and the southwest is ruled by a demoness called Nairuti. Uh, so this is the area is called Nairutya. So Nairuti is there, the, it's the demoness area. So when you speak of the demoness area, it means that is the strength there. And astrologically, that is ruled by Rahu. So here I want to, when we speaking of this, I want to tell you something. Uh, I just now said, no, in April, uh, in uh, third week or fourth week, you know, the Guru Chandala Yoga begins. So it is necessary that you know uh, you take care of the southwest, you take care of the northeast. Northeast, keep it clean as much as possible of every room. And as far as southwest is concerned, you know, southwest is a place where habit there let it be more of a store. See, in fact, what one of the classical works, I don't know whether it's Broth Samhita or uh, whatever, some uh, classical work, what it says is Nairutya uh, Bhandara. That means Nairutya is southwest. That means Bandara is, you know, store area. So don't store yourself there because when the when the uh, uh, Guru Chandala Yoga or Guru, Guru Chandala Dosha takes place, where by storing yourself in the southwest, you get disturbed. So I don't want to. So you see, take care. See that, you know, if it's not, not impossible, you relocate yourself to some other place. Then. Where do we get the proper Vastu information from? This is also important. I'm telling you something, but you want to, suppose you want to learn more and more, then these are the ways. Amara Kosha is there. Ramayana, in Ramayana also there are many places where, you know, Vastu Shastra is spoken about. Mahabharata is there. Jatakas are there. Chulluvagga, that is the Buddhist literature, Chulluvagga, that also contains a lot of information about Vastu Shastra. The Puranas are there. There are many Puranas which give a lot of information. Primarily, I think Matsya Purana gives a lot of information about uh, Vastu Shastra. Then Bruhat Samhita of Varahmita, of course, that is, you know, it's an encyclopedia of many subjects where, you know, they have identified, uh, they have given a lot of information on Bruhat Samhita, sorry, a lot of information on Vastu Shastra for the Deva, for the Manishalayas and for the Devalayas. That is for the uh, human habitations and for the temples. So this is one book that most of you can purchase. Then we have the Agamas, different Agamas are there. There are also Agamas. You have, uh, some of these Agamas are available, you know, uh, in uh, book form also. You know, the translated form is also there. I think you can try Munshi Ram Manohar Lal is one, uh, one place. And then Motilal Banasidas. So they are, maybe these people will be able to uh, you know, give you the English editions of the Agamas. Then you have the Tantras, various Tantras are there. You know, the Tantras also contain a lot of uh, information like Kirana Tantra and all that. So that is also one thing that you can buy. Then Kautilya Sartha Shastra. See, most people think that Kautilya Sartha Shastra is to do with uh, uh, how to, you know, lead a, a proper uh, royal life and all that. So, uh, and... Uh, 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 more, more, in fact, in fact, Kautilya Sahaja Shastra is not like that. It is more to do with uh, ec economics and all that. But here in uh, Artha, in uh, Artha Shastra, Kautilya Sahaja Shastra, we have a lot of information about Vastu Shastra. So that is also, I think, Shama Shastri. There is a person called Shama Shastri who has translated Artha Shastra very well. You probably can you know, buy that book and then get a lot of information about Vastu Shastra. Then, of course, the standard books are there. One is Mayamata. One is Manasara, and then we have Samarangana Sutra Dara, written by a king called Bojaraja. So all these three you know, have great information about Vastu Shastra. And then finally, my books. 
my books are there they are written all in english and of course for sarkana people uh, my karana books are also available and uh, right now my books are being published by an american publisher lotus press you can you know, uh, google and then find out the address and all that my books are also there we try try to give you, you know the minimal practical uh, information instead of just going on putting on a lot of slokas and finally the student never understands anything i try to give what exactly he needs or she needs or you can go through my books also then is, is uh, some people ask me you know is vastu shastra limited to one faith and one hemisphere having you know come in the northern hemisphere or having come from uh, india which is in the northern hemisphere and coming from a place like india where you know where, where most of us were hindus uh, some uh, some people have asked me this question vastu shastra is beyond all this it is you know not limited to one faith and one hemisphere it can be applied to every faith and every part of the world some people also ask me does it work in southern hemisphere i have enough clients in southern hemisphere including new zealand and uh, uh, australia and i have given the same principles uh, guidance and they are also it works so one thing that you will need to know uh, well, let me ask one of you when you are listening to me can one of you can answer does the sun uh, rise in the west in australia no the, in basically when you speak of manushya it is human habitation we have the, uh, the ancients have spoken about you know for anything to do with designing a building uh, they have uh, designed a building or designing a temple they have spoken about 32 plans the plan is each the plan is called a mandala when you speak of mandala it means it's a plan they were they they were talked about 32 mandalas the first primary mandala is sakala mandala that is one by one for instance suppose some people you know they put a mat and sit on the ground that becomes a mandala sakala mandala that becomes a sakala mandala then we have the next one pita mandala 3 into 3 so we you know you have nine modules the central is always the brahmasthana this is used primarily for rooms i'm not speaking they are not used for the buildings but they are used for the uh, inner rooms for each inner room you know they have to identify the panchabhutas this pita mandala is made use of then we have the paramasaika mandala which is 9 by 9 modules this paramasaika mand- uh, module is used primarily for identifying the doors openings and such other things so uh the 9 by 9 is called paramasaika mandala so primarily when we speak of manushya life human habitation we speak of sakala pita and paramasaika so i have already said you just for the reference here in immediate reference sakala mandala is 1 by 1 pita mandala is 3 by 3 paramasaika mandala is 9 by 9 and vipruti kanta mandala is 27 by 27 so these are these are the normal number of modules that are used for anything to do with human habitation then we have the devalaya devalaya the sakala mandala always comes even for the uh, devalaya if you if you look into the garbhagudi the garbhagudi garbhagudi is a single, single space that is called the sakala then you know when you decide on the total temple you make of the manduka or you make use of the asana which is 10 into 10 modules again i mean of course there in the same 30 there's a list of 32 mandalas which i will show you later on but there you know as far as devalaya is concerned these are the three mandalas that are basically used sakala mandala one module samanduka mandala 64 modules 8 into 8 asana mandala 100 modules 10 into 10 Indrakanta Mandala, 1024, 32 into 32. So 32, each area is divided into 30 parts, uh, 32 vertical, 32 horizontal. And you know that uh, becomes 1024 modules. So this is uh, primarily used for divine habitations. So this uh, list is there. I will not go through the list because it will be there, available later on. Those of you who want it immediately, you can always click the photograph. So there, you know, all the different mandalas are given. basically this is one thing that all of you can make a note uh, because i'm i said you know i'm trying to make it uh, you know the vastu shastra usable in your day to day life that's why i'm giving all this 
uh the best thing you know for the meditation is always to sit and a sakala you can uh, sit cross leg preferably uh most people uh, 80 to 90% are still able to sit on the ground you sit on but always you know put a mat there don't sit directly on the ground always put either a mat or a pitam you know the wooden plank is there which we call as the pitam in our language so that pitam also can be put then uh, rooms, you know, when you speak of rooms, you always, you know, go by the Peter Mandala 3x3, three three, I earlier told you. Then when you go for buildings, you know, you go by the Paramasayaka 9x9 nine nine module. So you divide the entire area into 9x9 nine nine and then decide on where the rooms have to come uh, uh, and where, where the doors have to come, windows have to come and all that. Then as far as temples, uh, temples are concerned, the primary usage will be Manduka. 8x8 eight eight is normally the, for the bigger temple that we use which is called Manduka. And then uh, we also make use of the a little bigger, uh, you know, where we divide into 10 by 10 modules. That is called the Asana. And uh, as far as the layouts are concerned, you know, some a uh, uh, lot of uh, these builders, they're all doing all these uh, various layouts of uh, apartment blocks and all these uh, individual houses, everything they're doing, no? For that, they, you know, they can make use of this Vipriti Kanta module, which is 27 into 27. Then when it comes to uh, cities, you know, actual cities were being uh, constructed and all that. Then uh, cities means it could be in a small town, small village, all this, is, all this uh, can be done. For that one, you know, you're making use of the Indra Kanta or 32 by 32 module plan. So, sorry to interrupt. Is it like you say all the rooms should be square only or anything should be square only layout or rooms? Or is it like you divide whatever is there into that format uh no it, it need not be uh it need not be square mm -hmm. it need not be, dooms or whatever no what you do you need to do is it could be a square rectangle or whatever you just mm -hmm. need to divide that into nine equal parts okay when you, you divide into nine equal parts <coughs> the part on the north and east side that that's total the part becomes ishanya it's not the corner that is ishanya the total part, you know, that becomes Ishanya. Similarly, the opposite side, you know, that that particular sector, one module of that nine modules, that becomes the southwest, like that. Okay. So, uh, not, uh, not necessarily, you know, you can have square. In fact, I don't prefer, I don't uh, uh, prefer a square uh, room for any of the human habitations. I would always prefer rectangular. Okay. Thank you. Now you see, this is uh, only for diagram. I put that square. You know, you can, it can be uh, whatever shape. Here, what I want to say is, uh, earlier time they had what, uh, what is called the courtyard houses. So they had the courtyard houses when they divided an area into four parts. When they divided the area into four parts, the central part was called the Brahmasthana. The second one, the yellow portion, was called the Daiva. The third portion, the orange portion, that was called the Manusha. And the last portion was called the Paishacha, on which no construction came. So, if you can look at the courtyard houses, this, this was always the courtyard. And then people could move here, and then this portion was always the rooms. So when that happened, when the rooms were here, they had windows on either side. So the cross ventilation was all, always there. So one thing that you should not, notice is when you construct a home as much as possible, try to have cross ventilation. So when you have cross ventilation, the room is comfortable and that way the vastu also automatically, you know, many of the imbalances get balanced. This is called the VD concept. And this is also, you know, when you're uh, constructing, you know, bigger building layouts and all that, this uh, particular uh, concept also you can follow. For instance, suppose you're doing a layout initially, you can create this one. Then within that, you know, you can start creating the different other modules, uh, the Peter Mandala, the Paramasayaka Mandala, Indrakanta Mandala, all these mandalas, you know, within that you can create. Then Navastu Purusha Paramasayaka Mandala, you know, is ruled by 45 deities. That means they've identified uh, when the Vastu Purusha is there, they, you know, when the Vastu Purusha falls on the ground, all these deities go there and hold him there. So the, these deities are there 
I'll give you uh, you know one or two more uh, uh, bigger uh, slides, which will uh, you know give the names also. Like I I am not going to in the details of uh, all these different uh, details for your record. You know you can take a look. For instance, I'm speaking of the north north uh, area. I'm speaking of Vayu, Naga, Mukya, Balata, so all these are there. So now this is all the, all these uh, uh, details that rule. So why I'm showing this one is. When you uh, when you uh, do a construction, normally what they do is mechanically they go into the northeast and do some uh, puja. Actually, you know what you need to do is you should mark everything, and then offer you know you should create a particular mandala and offer you know uh, some food to each of the deities before the actual construction. So uh, this is the north portion where all these deities are there. In the central portion, the Brahma portion, you have these you know, four. Uh, on the west side, you have Ashura, Jaladipa, Pushpadanta. Similarly, on the on the right side, uh, east, you know, you have uh, Mahendra, Aditya, Satyaka, and all these like that. So then you come to the down bottom portion, so the, which is to do with the south. You have all these Sugriva, uh, Davarika, Pitru, Indra, uh, Indra Jaya, Indra. All these things are there. So all these details, you know, what you need to do is I'm. It may be impossible for to practically going and uh, trying to put, you know, divide everything and putting the offerings there. No, you symbolically put the offerings to all over the area. And, you know, that is then you know, like appeasing the deities that are holding the uh, Asta Purusha strong. Then, when you do the construction, it is necessary that you take care of uh, certain uh, diagonals and certain lines, certain dots and all that. You know, when, when the Architect does the diagram. You know, we should see that uh, when he does this st structural drawing, also when he puts the columns and all that, you should see that you know, so certain of these things are not disturbed. So the diagonals that I've shown here, the the crossing diagonals, they are called the Kona Sutra, and the rest of the lines are called Pada Sutra. Then you have, if you carefully observe, and uh, if you, this this particular thing, I've divided into nine by nine modules. Which is the Paramasaika mandala, which is used for human habitations. So uh, the uh, four white dots are there. The big white dots are there. They are called the Mahamarmas. So they should not be disturbed. The column should never come on them. You know, when the, that comes, you know, naturally the harmony in the family will uh, start uh, uh, get, get, uh, getting affected. Then you have what uh, what are called the uh, the smaller dots, the 32 red dots are called marma points. So they are also identified in the in the picture. I've identified where the marma points come. As much as possible, try to avoid having your so you suppose you're building walls and all that. Try to have you know avoid having exactly on that. In fact, uh, some people ask me, uh, how do I identify the uh, how radius uh, of the circle and then uh, the thickness of the line and all? How do we take care of that? I think if I refer, uh, I think if it should be Brihut Samhita or some uh, text uh, where they have identified the thickness also. The diagonal thickness is 124th of a module. Suppose a module is, a, say, about 9, 9 feet or 10 feet. So divided by 124, that, th that thickness will be the diagonal thickness. The line thickness will be 116th of a module. The white dot, you know, the, which is the bigger dot, is 18th of a module. The red dot, which is the smaller dot, is one twelfth of a module. When I speak of a module, it means you know this one particular small area. Then uh, we have uh, what is called the uh, primary uh, Paramasaika mandala, which is used for all constructions. And many people are uh, they ask me where the door has to be. Randomly, you know, people now you know they put some door somewhere. The ancients have identified, you know, certain placements, good placements where the energy is coming are very positive. They have identified that on all the four directions. So this can may make it clear. So some people say, you know, you should not have a south door, should not have a west door, and all there's nothing like that. None of the classical works have ever said south is bad, west is bad. They have not said that. So the energies from all sides are available. Only thing is they identified certain areas where when the energy came, it would be very positive and very good for the inmates of the, uh, uh, for, for the residents of the building. So as uh, far as... Uh, is, sorry, sir. Is there any, uh, uh, is there any link with the astrological chart also, like some of the Rashis? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to that later. I'm going into yeah. that. I'm Thank going you. into that. Yeah. 
sorry one more question that if some plots are like a diagonal you know not very exactly rectangular shape or square shape some kind of slanted one side length is more one side length is uh, short yeah, they say so it is not yeah, good is it? i'm going and uh, yeah. now uh, let me cover everything sure thank you i'm going yeah. into all that so basically here i've identified the red dots and uh, the white dots everything i have identified so if you carefully observe on the north side the third and fourth module from the west is always very good for door so uh, you, you do, uh, take a look at the arrow that means the top portion is north and i am speaking you know the, the modules uh, the yellow colored modules which are for the primary uh, door primary door you know my let me also tell you something mechanically my primary door they put it in that area but the door is always locked so there is no energy coming into that area at all so earlier time it was not like that when you have when they had this courtyard houses and all that they used to keep the uh, door always open a lot of people will would come they would participate they will stay there as guests and then we have food and move about and all that so that energy was constantly coming but today you go to a flat or you go to a home there the main door is always locked where is the energy coming from so mechanically saying you know south nirajan baba has advised the south door for me so uh, i'm putting the door there but the south door is always closed there is no energy coming it doesn't work for you at all so, so you be have to this is very necessary uh, of course uh, like one of you just now asked me i'll tell you the connection uh, from the rashi point of view also and uh, so, so on the on the eastern side this is the eastern side on the eastern side you know the second third and four, fourth modules uh, are very good for the uh, mahadwara mahadwara means where the primary energy comes into it instead of the mahadwara is not there you can definitely have a window there a big window there so the energy comes there and then uh, when it comes to the south side you know you have just one door uh, good for the uh, mahadwara that is the fourth module here and then when you go 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 to the uh, western side you have one module here which again which is the fourth from the right side you always you know from the right side you stand you look into that and uh, the, from the right side you have to count one two three four so that that is uh, you know recommended by the classical works and if you carefully observe all the sides the fourth module is approved on all the sides suppose you know this is the total building on all the sides the fourth module is approved so if you have the doors on all the four modules that is definitely very good so it goes somewhere sometimes they call it the sarvato badra so that means everything so that uh, doorway on the, all the four sides is definitely good then uh, th this white thing that i've shown here this is excellent for devaliyas for temples it is if you also careful observe most of the temples you know i'm not speaking of the recent temples i'm speaking of the ancient temples invariably you know, the entrances are always in the center this is excellent for the temples but definitely bad for the human habitation in fact one of the books says you know madhya dwara kula nashaha so you have to be careful mechanical some people say you know have it then the right it will be look uh, gorgeous it will look royal and all that invariably you know the uh, harmony in the family is affected and you know the separations and such other things you know take place so always avoid uh, having a central uh, uh, doorway in your human habitation in your residence or in your business even in the business place i don't recommend that then the peter mandala which i spoke of the nine modules they have identified this which i already i think i have told you uh, we'll go to the next one so selection now when you sell a selection of sites and homes i'll now go into that when i also speak of the astrological aspects the first and foremost is avoid when you select a site avoid proximity to religious structures see some people they feel happy you know oh there is a temple here let me buy a site uh, near the temple it will be very good i can visit the temple every day and all that but what happens is when you speak of a uh, temple devalaya it is more of spiritual energy the energies there are too powerful so your material output at the home will get affected so when you are trying to stay in the home 
everything else may be good you the temple is there you can go there pray there everything is okay but materially you will not prosper so this is one thing that uh, you need to materially prosper means it's in everything not necessarily only finances the harmony in the family the health of the family and uh, you know uh, not uh, not uh, you know taking too many debts and building uh, taking structures and all that all that is avoided suppose you're too close and everything will get affected so as much as possible try uh, you know uh, avoid the proximity to religious structures so do the shastra say why it is so i told you no the, that's what i told you the energies from, from the religious places are too much because every day consecration is taking place isn't it the spiritual energy is too much the spiritual energy will affect the material prosperity okay Which spiritually they may get evolved but mm. let me tell you let me ask you honestly how many people of you only only want to be spiritually evolved today if you carefully observe even the uh, swami ji is they not you know they are also materially prosperous no mm. So material is everything. With the, you know, unless unless, the unless you are right. materially successful, you cannot go to Vanaprastha or Sanyasa also. Yes. <laughs> Aren't you? Yeah. So Vanaprastha, Sanyasa, no one goes there. These days, no one goes there. No. Yeah. How many people? How, how many of them go there? So yeah. you uh, relax and then you know, try. Let the temple be a little away. You know, suppose it's there on the other street, one street away. It's yeah. okay. But if it's in, you know, where, uh, where you know the shadow of the temple falls on you. automatically now that becomes uh, uh, materially weak okay then uh, okay so i think now we are coming to this one this is uh, rashi signs and directions this is about uh, one of you asked me just now uh, so you put this chart the zodiac chart is put and then i identified the different signs their aries taurus gemini and all that so let's be, let's begin with the first sign the aries Aries south and east are important. So there, if you can observe, uh, whatever the red I have marked, that becomes more important. So for Aries, south is important and east is important. Then for Taurus, south is important and west is important. Now south is a bad. South is bad. People were going saying no. uh and this is i'm basing it on the rashi i'm not basing it on the lagna you can keep that also in mind i have made the rashi signs i said no rashi is the position of the moon in the horoscope that becomes the janma rashi i'm basing it on the janma rashi and uh, you know uh, so, uh, so, so south is bad people go on saying let me tell you one thing my father's house dr b v raman saus Uh, which he built in 46 or 47 or 48 at that uh, time that was south facing where we all grew up and all each of us we have done very well in our respective fields whatever it was and father as father father and mother are concerned they did extremely well in whatever they did no jyotisha the map of jyotisha was uh, you know put on the world map by my father so south facing right now also i niranjan babu is also living in a flat which has a uh, south entrance my rashi is mithuna so mithuna also if you careful observe south and west are equally important so i am doing well my children are doing well they are all uh, well, uh, uh, working professionally very well their family lives are all well and south and west so first thing that you have to keep uh, you know take out from your mind is south and west is bad there is nothing like that south and west is fine and particularly you know if it matches with your respective uh, uh, moon sign it is perfect then as far as cancer is concerned south and west west becomes more important so west becomes more important and then uh, kanya virgo okay, when you say north and west are equally important libra or uh, uh, tula north is more primarily important and west is secondarily important both are important i'm not saying the rest of the sign and the rest of the directions are not important they are all important but these are more important you have to take care of that then uh, we have scorpio where north and east are equally important uh, north and east are important north becomes more important sagittarius dhanur rashi north and east are equally important so dhanur you know if you carefully observe the lord is jupiter and i just now said jupiter's area is northeast so automatically see it is fall into place 
So this becomes very important. Then as far as Capricorn is concerned, north and east are important. East is more important. Aquarius, south and east are important. South and east are important. Uh, so, uh, east again, primarily important. Uh, for Aquarius, unlike Capricorn, even though both are ruled by Saturn, for Aquarius, south becomes important. For uh, Makara or Capricorn, north becomes important. Then we go into the Pisces or the Mina, Mina Rashi. South and east are equally important. So this is what uh, probably you uh, wanted to know. So you can make a note of this based on this, you know, when you will do the selection. Somebody asked me, you know, when uh, we do a selection, uh, the family is there, the parents are there, then the children are there, and the grandchildren are there. Who's the uh, Janma Rashi you have to look into? What I would say is, who is going to be the investor? Who will invest? That's important. Suppose if both the husband and wife invest, both of them you try to take a look. And then, then you check into the other people. And if you find that, you know, uh, one particular uh, direction indicated, two directions indicated are more prominent in that family, you go ahead with those two directions. I mean, people who are going to live there, not that, you know, just because these children, but they're living uh, abroad, it does not mean that you have to take their uh, uh, general Rashi is also into consideration in the home that you're going to build. Suppose they're with you only, and your parents are there, you are there, and the children, all of you are in one building, then you know you do that uh, comparison, like I said. Basically, the primary person who invests the money into the project is uh, uh, his uh, direction, his uh, general Rashi has to be taken into consideration. I have just given a small thing here. Suppose it's Simha Rashi, I already said, you know, directions are north and west. And then uh, the ruler of uh, Simha Rashi is uh, sun. So when you speak of sun, you know, automatically east comes, you know, the, the ruler of, uh, when you speak of sun, the direction indicated east. So north, west, and east are equally good. So here, if you also carefully observe, it is not the um, table, earlier table, you know, the only only the earlier table that I looked into, I also looked into the lordship of that particular sign. So based on, based on that, you know, you can, uh, uh, north and west for the Simha Rashi is there, and then the uh, lord of the Rashi is sun, sun's direction is east, so whether north, west or east, all of them are equally good. Then many people ask me, you know, the shula, what, the shula, what happens to the shula? Is shula good or not? So, so they find a beautiful house, but you know, most of the time they, there's a shula there. When the shula is there, uh, oh, whatever. So normally I would recommend, you know, avoid the Vidi shula. Suppose it's a huge, big apartment where you have, you know, thousand apart flats and all that, and into that uh, cycle thing there is a shula you don't need to bother because, you know, that Shula effect will uh, disperse over uh, 1,000 flats or 2,000 flats and uh, no negative energy will be there. But suppose it's an independent individual home that you're looking into, then, you know, you try to avoid this uh, Shula as much as possible. Suppose the Shula is uh, there and you have to buy that property because it's near the college, near the school, near the working place or near the uh, uh, you know, medical shop, all these things you take into consideration. Uh, or you know, then you know, then you have to take it means this shula effects can be rectified by you know proper uh, landscaping. All that of course later you know, I mean, we'll, that's also deep going too deep into that. But like as generally said, you know, landscaping can minimize that. If you have to buy, you buy. You know, there's no way you have to buy means you already committed and all that. Then you know, proper landscaping can minimize the effects of that. And when I, for instance, when I give a consultation, I not only make the, ask them to do the landscaping properly, but I also give them one or two yantras relevant to that particular direction and ask them to put it in the ground. So that way, you know, the, the negatives uh, get minimized. So this is uh, the shula, so that shula should be avoided. Then uh, somebody asked me about shapes and all that, no? So normally this shape is uh, the rectangular shape or the square shape, all these shapes are approved. Uh, the, uh, but here, the, I'm not speaking of the shape, I'm speaking of the cardinal orientation. So the cardinal orientation to the cardinal directions gave uh, was of primary importance when earlier temples and you know, palaces were built. They always oriented, if you carefully look into 
be always oriented to the cardinal directions. North, East, South or West. So for instance, South, uh, you know, Dakshina Murthy, you know, orients to the South. So that way all the directions were equally good. Only thing is they gave importance to proper orientation. So orientation to the cardinal direction is always recommended. This is not recommended. I'm not saying that, you know, we has gone, you know, that's bad and all that. I'm, I'll also give you, you know, certain guidelines how to rectify all this. Then these shapes, like I said, the square shape and the rectangle shape, they're all fine. No? Circular shape, I put a tick mark and I put an into mark. The circular shape is excellent for temples, but not good for human habitations. Then this is a different type of uh, thing. This is also this sort of shape is not good. But here again, I'm not saying you know, that uh, if you find uh, some very good, very relevant uh, economically priced sites of this shape, you don't buy, I'm not saying. You can always rectify that, which I'm going to tell you a little later on. See, now here again, I'm put these uh, different uh, uh, sites there. One, two, three, four. The top four are all uh, uh, approved, approved sites. <clears throat> the central site, I said, you know, is approved for the temple. Uh, the circular site, I said, it's approved for the temple. At the bottom, you know, I've put th th three different shapes which are not approved. But what I've said at the bottom, if you read carefully, you can rectify irregularly shaped site by creating a mandala with landscaping. So here, I created a mandala. We saw that, no? So automatically, that particular, when you create the mandala with landscaping, I'm not asking to create mandala with stones and all that. You know, some people do all that. Natural landscaping is always best because you can also make use of that area, soil area and all that. You don't need to waste that. So the, the this uh, triangle shape can you know, be converted into a uh, habitable zone by creating the lands proper landscaping. Then as far as this uh, right angle triangle is concerned, uh, this this is how you can get it done. You don't need to uh, not use uh, too, too much of space. You know, you can do it all this, uh, use these spaces by creating the uh, different three mandalas I created there. By creating the three mandalas properly by landscaping. So that way, the rectification is possible. It is not, uh, not the mechanically, you know, some uh, consultant comes and says, don't go, don't buy this site and all, you know, that is uh, not right. For instance, one of these temple sites that I saw there in uh, uh, USA, one of the local consultants had said the Agni has grown, so the site should not be bought, it's not good for, the, and they were planning to have the Shethi Sai temple there, and said, you know, it's not good for the temple to be there, so you reject that land, you buy some other land. They had already bought the land and all that. They got me there. They, they contacted me here in Bangalore. They got me there. When I looked at the site, I said, nothing to worry. The Agni, when the Agni is grown, grow, the Achara strength becomes more. You can comfortably have the temple. And right from uh, basics of the temple to the final construction, I stood with the architect and got it done. And now, you know, it is being, uh, the temple is very active and people are happily coming there and taking the blessings of the Acharya. So here also, this particular thing that I was, you know, here also, which I said into mark, the, the rectification is done this way. This is all, you know, landscaping uh, that we have done. When the landscaping is done that way, automatically the mandala becomes normal and the ne negativeness minimizes. Then elevations or depressions. For instance, uh, many people, they try to go buy resorts and hill, hill stations in such other places where, you know, the elevations and depressions are there. So which is right, which is wrong, we have to see. Basically, the elevations from east, uh, the depressions from east to west is bad. The depressions from east to west is bad. The depressions from north to south is bad. The depression from northeast to south, uh, southwest is bad. But you turn it uh, the other side, the depressions from west to east are good. Depressions from south to north are good. Depressions from southwest to northeast are good. Then, when you buy a land and there's some elevations and all that, you know, 
in terms of the soil uh, being uneven and all that, it is necessary that uh, you level the land in such a way when the, when the natural drain is there, the water flows to the north or east. So there must slight, you know, uh, 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 the, the, uh, when the sloping of the uh, sites is necessary. So level the line in such a way that natural land, when, it, when the water flows, uh, it flows to the north and east, when there is natural rain. Then uh, how some, some places, you know, when you're trying to buy a site and you're not sure of the quality of the that, you know, what you need to do is, the first is the soil should be able to take the foundation. That means the soil should be fertile. The soil should be fertile. How do, how do you check on that? If the soil is fertile, the greenery will be there lot of flowers will be there otherwise you know it could be totally dry and dead you know that way it would be there. so what you need to do is there is a method of uh, suppose it is a dry soil but you want to find out whether the soil is good for construction then what you do is you dig, uh, go to the particular site area dig soil one hasta one hasta is normally you know your uh, measurement from the bottom of the palm to the top tip of the middle finger that is called uh, normally it's about 18 inches so you, you uh, dig a pit of uh, 18 inches deep and 18 inches wide. Next day, uh, when, uh, when you put the uh, duck soil, you know, into that and it, uh, the pit totally fills up, it means, you know, the, uh, the soil is good for construction. Simple. So it's a very simple remedy that's given in the classical works. I'm not speaking of, you know, the modern works and all that. It's given in the classical works. So this is a simple way of uh, trying to find out whether the uh, soil is fit enough for taking the construction. Then availability of water. Many a time, you know, you find that there are uh, termite hills. Termite hills are water called the ant hills. Uh, the termites build the hill, but you know, the snake does not have any other place where it comes and happily, you know, uh, gets itself habitated, habitated in that area. So when the uh, snake uh, pit is there, it only means the uh, availability of water is uh, indicated. When an ant hill is there, when a termite hill is there, it means that in that particular area, there is groundwater. So uh, somebody also asked me, you know, when, uh, is it okay for us to remove it? There's nothing wrong in uh, doing that. Only thing is, before removing the, the traditional books, what they say is, before removing, removing the antel, do some puja. After removing, do some puja in that area, that's all. So that is good enough. It's not, it does not mean that antel is there, it should be there only, and more and more snakes should come and all that. It's not uh, required. You can remove it. Only thing is, you know, you have some, show some respect to that particular area, do the puja, remove the antel, do the puja again, that's all. So when buying or uh, uh, constructing a house, how much time are we left with? Um, we have five more minutes. Maybe we can see how many slides are there. Few more. Few more, okay. Then maybe, maybe we can allocate some 10 minutes for Q&A. Yeah, maybe, no, because... Oh, no, no, problem. Problem. Will uh, no problem. Yeah. No problem. What I suggest is, what I suggest is, when you select a... Uh, flat or you know when you select a villa or you buy a, a house or you or you you know construct a house you give primary importance to natural ventilation and natural light on all the sites primarily on the north and east north i already i said you know north is to do with mercury mercury is to do with intelligence and thus the, the this this is very important particularly when you have children and you have you know People are trying to do well in their profession and all that. North North energy is very important. East energy is important for everyone. That is the health energy that comes in. So east, east is Surya. The Surya energies have to come in. So when you uh, so when the north energies are uh, when the north wall is uh, low, you know uh, closed and uh, on the other side you have another apartment, it means you know your uh, not only intelligence your finances also because it's the north is the area of Kubera your finances also get disturbed. Now you may have a lot of finance, but you know, you'll be also having a lot of debts and you know, uh, the difficult situation could be there. So it's always good, you know, 
try to select uh, homes that have north particularly if you're looking for a flat because one side uh, or two sides you know would be blocked you know what you need to do is you see that as much as possible you have the north and the east energy coming that will be good for the entire family see this is a courtyard house that i got designed for a client of mine and uh, you know the courtyard house is excellent because you know this is a place where the family this is brahmasthana this area of the brahmasthana in the Brahmasthana, you know, people can comfortably sit, exchange thoughts and all that. Their interaction also will be very good. The harmony also will get better and better each day when you use the Brahmasthana for your communication. And the rest of the things, so normally, you know, you would know the, whatever, you know, accordingly, it would be, the rooms would be there. When the rooms would be there, the, the good thing is, you know, you have went a lot of, if you careful observe, I have given a lot of ventilation on all the sides. So wherever, you know, ventilation, and from the, from the top also we have a lot of ventilation. Today, you know, for security reasons, they may not open it to the, totally to the sky, but they will have, you know, some sort of a close uh, white ceiling where light is, uh, but at the sides, you know, I ask them to keep it open. When the sides are open automatically, all the warm air will go out, and that way, you know, the, the total house, you know, tends to be cool. Even in summer, it tends to be cool. Now, the last one aspect, I mean, please give me a few more minutes. This is a very important thing that I want to share with. It's good for the, all the family members. This is to do with Arogya, the health aspect. So each one of us, we have that spinal. Every one of us has the spinal column. And the spinal column, you know, has the chakras. We, normally, you know, the spinal column up to Agni chakra is the shed chakras. And the seventh chakra, Sapta chakra is there on the head, you know, on the top of the head, which is the Sahasra chakra. So the Sahasra Chakra is there, so totally seven chakras are there. So uh, I'll, say, I'll tell you why I'm talking about this. The way you sit is also very important. Randomly people sit wherever they want, do whatever they want and all that, you know. And they will start complaining of all sorts of health problems. So the spinal column, if you carefully observe, the spinal column has all the, uh, uh, related to all the aspects of health. The entire, the spinal column is good rest of the body problems can be easily taken care of. The spinal, spinal columns get affected. You have invariably all sorts of problems. So here I've given the, you know, the different chakras, you know, beginning from the Sahasrara, which is at the top, Agni Chakra, Vishuddhi. And then, uh, uh, then you have the Manipura ch Chakra, and then the Swadhisthana and the Moonadhara. All these are also, again, just be careful observe, all these are all uh, in related to the uh, Panchabhutas. <coughs> we should this uh, related to the space, I mean, the one at the, uh, where you have the neck, you know, that is related to the space. Anahata is related to air, Manipura is related to fire, Swadhisthana is related to water, and Moonadhara, that is the navel, you know, uh, that that more, uh, actually not necessarily the level it uh, below the navel that chakra is called Munadara chakra that is to do with the earth element so uh, that way all all of them you know they're related to the different uh, so these are important now the, the next slide you know will give you a lot of uh, you know important uh, information I will say I will put a picture where a young lady is sitting, working on her computer, and behind her, there is a wall. The spinal cord is the main pathway of communication between the brain and the rest of the body. So this is very important, you know, even I mean, um, uh, medical students also can, uh, you know, look into that and they will find this is, the word. This is what uh, they say you know, in medicine also. The spinal cord is the main pathway of communication between the brain and the rest of the body. If you get the right ideas, the rest of the body also will work out. Probably. Suppose I want to move my hand, or you know, I want to uh, extend my hands, or you know, uh, I want to turn my neck, or whatever. Everything has to go to the brain for uh, the body to work properly. It is the long, thick, fragile structure that extends downward from the base of the brain to the navel and can be caused for various elements. So if this this spinal column is disturbed, so you know the various uh, elements also can come there. Just a moment. So here, what I mentioned, this is applicable to the seniors, 
the uh, the working people and then the children particularly children you know always sit with your back closer to the wall when you study or when you do some work and all that don't randomly sit somewhere you know you sit on a sofa and the sofa is about five feet or ten feet away from the uh, wall that way you know your, your spinal column gets affected even the sofa back could be there but the energies come there and then you know they hit you and the energies the power of the energies you will not know because you know they are not seen and they don't they don't come with a force but they definitely affect the fragile spinal structure so what i would suggest is i'll give you a small uh, uh, you know suggestion helpful suggestion uh, <clears throat> boys and men boys and men you always sit closer to the south wall without touching the wall and look into the north which is the direction of intelligence and finance as far as the girls are concerned girls and women are concerned you always sit closer to the west wall back closer to the west wall without touching it look into the east and do your work you know whether it's you know you work on your laptop or where you write some accounts or do whatever you know try to sit closer to the west wall and look into the east east is the direction of surya Surya is the planet taking. He gives light to everyone. So that way, you know, when the lady of the home, when the uh, 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 child of the uh, girl child of the home, you know, she looks into the uh, east, you know, she will be able to give the right guidance to all of the, all the family members. That is why the woman is called the homemaker, not the housewife. She is called the homemaker. So I would prefer, you know, the women and the girls to always sit closer to the west wall, look into the east. See, they're all very simple things. I'm not speaking about, uh, you know, this one being here, that one being there. And I'm giving you very simple guidelines. You know, this could uh, do a great uh, change in your day-to-day -day, uh, health and day-to-day, -day, you know, uh, working conditions. See, sitting with the back uh, at a distance from the wall can induce the following ailments. Chronic headaches, lower back pain, neck, knee, and hip pain, frequent illnesses, excessive fatigue, numbness in the hands or feet, everything, every aspect, right from neck, knee, hip, everything is there, you know, affected. Then menstrual problems for women, particularly, they have bleeding and such other problems, you know, that, and sometimes, you know, uh, they don't have a strong womb. All these prob problems could be basically because you're not sitting properly. And then migraine, and of course, more. Migraine is another thing, you know, which most uh, people suffer from. All these possibilities are, you know, could be. When I'm talking about this, one, I want to tell one, uh, another few minutes, and I will take. Uh, oh. What I want to say is, one of these clients who lives in Atlanta, young man of 32 years, he was always having great, you know, back pain. He could not sit at all, you know, whatever. He was, uh, you know, in a very, very responsible position. He could not sit. So I went and saw him and then he told me about the problem. I said, from today onwards, just sit closer to the south wall, look into the north. And mind you, within 15 days, he sends me a message. Sir, my back pain is totally cleared. I'm very comfortable now. I'm following your guidance, sitting closer to the south wall. So this, it can have, you know, sometimes a miraculous benefits it can give you. Only thing is, all of you should have that faith in Niranjan Babu faith in the work that you do and it will work. Then another thing is never have your mirrors on the south and west. So this is very important. I've seen many houses, you know, getting disturbed. Relationships and finances suffer. Both relationships and finances suffer when the mirrors are put on the south and the west walls. Try to avoid that. So if you just, uh, when you go back home, you just check or you're sitting in your home itself, just check. It's possible to relocate them. Please do relocate. Then this is particularly for kids. You know, I'm given a small guideline for the kids when uh, because they need to study well and come up in their life and all that. They have to sleep, you know, with their heads to the east always. Basically, I think that a global uh, thermal energy always flows from the east to the west. So when these uh, youngsters, you know, uh, they put their heads to the east, the first cleansing is done in their mind and they're able to think properly and then, you know, they're able to do well in their life. And uh, even sitting is important for the youngsters. The boy always sits closer to the south wall looking into the north. So I uh, put them in the southwest area to carefully observe. 
Then as far as the girl is concerned, I put her in the northwest area. So south southwest is the strength area. Northwest is the area of the moon. Moon is Matra Karaka and uh, Manak Karaka. So girl, you know, when the girl uh, needs to study, let us sit closer to the west wall, more to the north, without touching either side of the wall. That is important. Then sleep and orientation is very important. When you all sleep, you know, don't put your heads to the north at all. When you put your heads to the north, naturally there's disease, there's distress, and there's definitely depression. So this is uh, not approved. For sitting, uh, putting your heads to the north is not approved. Then uh, finally, I think the last one or two uh, numbers, I'll finish this one. Sleep orientation, I would prefer the elders to put their heads to the south. And then as far as the youngsters are concerned, the young adults and kids are concerned, I would prefer them put their heads to the east. And then, uh, uh, it's over, yes, okay. Well, this normal sofa arrangement, furniture arrangement, you know, try to have the heavy furniture on the south and uh, on the west, you try to have the heavy furniture. No, I'm not asking to have any furniture, not to have any furniture on the north and east, you can have. Have the heavy furniture on the south and west. And then uh, particularly when you see the visual media, the TV and uh, such other things, don't look on the south or west. Particularly when it come, uh, comes to the TV, normally they put, you know, on the south wall or the west wall. Don't do that. Try to relocate either to the north wall or to the east wall. And then one final thing I'll tell you, the energies around you are very important. Each one of us, we have an energy around us. These energies are, you know, either strong or weak or whatever. So it is very necessary that you greet people with the namaskaram and don't hug or embrace people, you know, shake hands. So by doing the namaskar, what happens is your energy will be retained by you. Otherwise, you know, somebody hugs and uh, you know shakes your hand, automatically your energy, if it's strong energy, it gets weakened. If it's weak energy, it further gets more weakened. So do you know do do the namaskaram and sitting, you know, always uh, you know space out from your. Uh, this is of course the traditional way of uh, eating, but uh, today you know you sit on the uh, chair, uh, dining table. You always you know try to space out. Do, don't you know eat from the other person's leaf and all that. Don't eat uh, eat with two hands. Eat with one hand only. Sadly, today you know they take both the hands and go and you know chapati breaking the chapati in two pieces in both hands. Don't do that. So uh, try to maintain that uh, simple, uh, uh, cleanly uh, happiness. Uh, uh, that way, you know, you'll be doing but I think we come to the fire. This is a close for today. In a later class, let me study. Let me let us study. I'll give you some information about the color therapy and the shala houses. Eka shala, dushala, trishala, chatushala, or they all there. You know, I'll speak of the in probably in some next. Uh, it could be mine or it could be you know, um, Mr. Elango's uh, class. Whichever it doesn't matter. No. I speak about color, color therapy and all that. So with this one, I close. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for such an enlightening session. Uh, sir, do you have time uh, for some more five or ten minutes? Because I want, I respect your time. So you came all the way. For no, but you know, if people have, uh, let me answer. No, let me answer. If, if you, if you permit me, I'll answer. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, let me go to the. Questions which are which try, already... to give, try to give me the question. Uh, just that question, it will be easy for me to read. No? Yeah, one minute. I think there are more questions. So you can uh, look at the question, and in case if you want to skip, uh, you are free to skip, sir, actually. Uh, the hmm. first question is southeast is fire ideally we should have kitchen there what is the remedy if you have master bedroom there so that's the question first question they asked say so they are not identified uh, that only as the kitchen southeast they have said fire they have said uh, they have generally said southeast is good uh, as a kitchen for being the primary element fire but it is excellent as ma, I wouldn't say it is excellent as a master room, but is it is excellent for boys to stay in a southeast room. When boys stay in a southeast room, they you know their thinking also becomes better and they're able to express themselves better, do the well in their studies. Or suppose you know they've done their studies but yet to you know find a good employment and all that, staying in the southeast. And as far as the master bedroom is concerned, in the master bedroom, if the master and uh, 
his wife or uh, 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 the spouse, you know, they're not fighting, relax and be there only, that's all. Okay, let me mark it as well. So what are the possible good or bad effects of water well dug in the northwest of the house? So do you want to go through or want to skip? No, no, northwest is not, not uh, normally recommended. Northwest uh, uh, wells, they invariably affect the uh, females of the home. Okay, fine. I don't recommend that. Okay, are there any remedies for not having proper vastu for house or an apartment especially? Especially for us, apartment there. Yeah, whatever asking. I told you right now, no, you just follow that, no? Many of okay. these guidelines, guidelines I've given you, simple, for instance, you know, how you sleep, how you sit, and then uh, keeping the windows open. See, what I find is you have windows all over, but all the windows are closed and your curtains are put and they work on the AA, they put on the ACs and sit there. So that means you get, you don't get any, any positive energies from outside at all. So keep the windows open and all that. And then uh, follow those guidelines, uh, your life will be better. Okay, fine. Uh, does color play a pivotal role in Vastu? Yeah, it does. No, that's why I said I'll speak of color therapy sometime later. Okay, okay, thank you. Does Vastu calculations are based on moon sign, lagna sign, or both? So basically, no, not lagna. I would uh, basically speak of whatever guidelines I've given, it's basically on the moon sign. This is what is called, you know, when you try to work out the uh, dimensions of a structure, you use what are called the Ayadi Shadwarga formula. And the Ayadi Shadwarga formula is concerned, there also we work out the nakshatra of the home. The nakshatra of the home should be compatible to the nakshatra of the owner. So that way. So that is the moon sign becomes important. Okay, fine. How bad is, is it when cooking is done in the western side of the house? Uh, what are the rectifications and remedies? On the opposite this? side, on the eastern side, you try to have your mixer, grinder, or something. No, that's all. Okay. Property you which is to, you try to activate. Say, east is sun. Sun is a, a fire. You know, he's a fiery planet. On the eastern side, you try to activate something. You know, it could go. It could be your uh, microwave oven, or it could be your mixer. It could be a grinder. You know, which constantly does some electrification there. Agni activation is good there. So that way, that balance is created. Okay. Property which is bought on behalf of parents' name or spouse name or children's, does was the calculations are conducted on these people or native himself? What does that mean? Uh, so the, the basically he is asking like uh, if the property is uh, bought on the parents' name or spouse name, then on what basis uh, whether the was to calculations are done? Like are the native itself or the parents or spouse who is involved? I think this is you already answered in the session like. Who is the owner? Like, who is the person who is investing, right? Yeah, that's who is investing. And uh, suppose both the husband and wife are investing. I would prefer uh, the, you take it on the wife's name because she is the homemaker. If if, if she is okay, you know, the rest of the family is also okay. No? Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Do we... okay. Do we require to make necessary corrections for inherited properties or not it required? See. Just like uh, people, you know, after 60 years, we become old, isn't it? Right. Also, uh, however, you know, mentally strong we may be, physically we get older. So we uh, start bending forward and all that. We, the weakness is there. Similarly, for homes also, after 60 years, they become weak. So it is necessary. Either I'm not asking you to raise them and build a fresh. You do some corrections and then, you know, uh, so some, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, uh, plaster uh, and then you know put some new paint and all that. That way, now you can continue the house for more time. More time, it will be valid. Okay. Fine. Drinking water machine aqua cord is installed in the southern wall of the kitchen. What are the possible effects on it on the family members? That particular dive in isolation, you should not take at all. No, that's wrong. Okay. You just activate something in the north, uh, northeast. That's all. I mean, no, this uh, aqua guard, you just shift it and put it there. No, what is the Instead um, of salt, you put it in half. Yeah, this is something you easily can do. Okay, any good book, good books? Okay, so he is asking, like, uh, what are the books by you? I think. Uh, you know, I think your Mr. Elango has the answer. Yes, yes, I can, yeah, I can send the, the list. Mine. Right, I can send the list. Uh, are the rules same for apartments and independent houses? Example, direction of front door of apartment or the direction of apartment itself? 
I always said no, as far as the direction is concerned, ori- try to t- go for the oriented uh, building, that's the first thing. Second one, don't worry too much about the door, because suppose, you know, for you, north is, uh, uh, north is compatible astrologically, but you have a south door. South door is always closed, so there's no energy is coming there. On the other hand, you know, the opposite, you have the windows, your north is always having the energy, you know? so that's fine for you. So the north compatibility person, astrological compatible person, can happily live in a south oriented house also. Okay, I think there is some personal question. If Sun or Mercury is the Lord of Dustana or Malefic placed in the Dustana, is it still okay to chant Aditya, Haridayam or Vishnu Sarasrama regularly? So yes, absolutely. Yes. Don't worry. In fact, they, they'll put them into shape. Whatever okay. the Dustana effects, they get into normally, a normal, normal say. Aditya Hridayam definitely has to be recited or listened to. That's uh, I tell everyone of us. Because if Surya is there, the king of the planets is there with you, why, why worry about the other planets? No? Right. I think this is already answered. How Vasta is decided based on whose name? That is already answered. Let's skip it. Is there any difference between rat and mouse according to Jodish? Is there any remedy when you are not happy you have? Rat or mouse at your home. Don't worry about rat and mouse are the same. And the rat and mouse, when you speak of rat and mouse, you can speak of Ganesha. That's good enough. Right. Uh, you mentioned to avoid diamond. So if I wear white sapphire instead of it, it's okay. Will it give bad results later? Pardon me? Uh, like he is asking, like you asked, uh, you mentioned to avoid diamond. So if if we wear white sapphire instead of it, is it okay? Why what do you want to wear, wear white sapphire? Any reason? It's also uh, astrologically, so you look into that. If necessary, you can wear that. Otherwise, you know, generally, I'm not saying don't wear diamonds. But what I found is uh, by experience, we will take the even, even the Kohinoor diamond and all that. You know how much of uh, you know uh, discomfort it's created. Diamonds will invariably create discomfort uh, during the later part of the life. Okay, right. Uh, gentle remedies for peace at home. Remove the mirrors on the south and west. Okay. Mm, excellent session, sir. Thanks. Uh, why southwest direction was not included in the couple slides where direction was linked with planets? Hmm? Uh, so he's asking why southwest direction was not included. Southwest in direction was included, no? Yeah, I think it's there. I think yeah, I basically, know. now that you know, okay, forget about all these questions. One last uh, before closing, I want to tell you. This Guru Chandala Yoga is there. So based on that, uh, you know, based on your respective horoscope, uh, the effects could be there. But primarily what happens is, uh, Guru, you know, his wisdom gets uh, affected. So w- when you take a decision of investing some money or buying some property and all that, you have to do a lot of, you know, spade work. Don't mechanically suggest, uh, say, somebody says, you invest, uh, uh, 50,000 rupees on this one, you know, you'll get one lakh rupees. You don't do that. You use because at that point of time, there's a tendency for your wisdom to go for a toss. So, you so basically, astrology when you speak of astrology, Jyotisha, the light of God, when we know certain things are not good, then at that point of time, you have to be a little careful. But also, since it's happening in uh, your friend's house uh, areas uh, where the uh, Chandal Yoga is happening. You know, the possible of accidents and such other things are also will be there. So you'll have to be careful. They don't show, you know, so for instance, I find that some youngsters, uh, they go at uh, great speeds on the motorcycles, making noises and all that. No, all that should be avoided. So I wish you all the best. Uh, thank you for being with me. And uh, uh, I hope, you know, I've at least been able to give you 1% of, uh, you know, whatever you wanted. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, please. So I had a question on Guru Chandala Yoga. If a native is uh, passing through uh, Guru Dasha or uh, Rahu Bhukti, will it affect more in Guru, Guru Chandala time? That's what Naturally. I mean. Okay, so ah, I know who is uh, that Meenakshi. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, I attended okay. quite a bit of my classes, my son's classes, and all that. <laughs> okay. So how are you doing? Yeah, very fine, sir. Thank you. So the same remedy will work for that. Is that? It's a Guru Chandala Yoga plus Guru Dasha Rao Bhukti also. No, no, what you, what you do is when Guru is uh, being affected, okay. you have to pray to the deity, Lord Shiva, Shiva Panchakshari. Okay. 
So okay. this also I'll give you the simple remedy. Shiva Panchakshari, you recite every day 28 times, sitting closer to the west wall, looking into the east. As a lady, okay, so we, we can start now only. We don't have to wait till April to start, right? No, no, so don't, because the effects have already begun. In the southern okay. hemisphere, hmm. three Krishna temples have been desecrated. Okay. In southern hemisphere, that is in Australia, the Iskon hmm. temples, you know, three of them, they have been desecrated by Gundas hmm. or Hooligans or whoever it is. So the effects have already begun. So you immediately begin. Now, why, why do you want to? Anything good, you immediately begin. Why do you wait now? Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll speak separately. Thank you so much. Mm. Oh. Anything else anyone, anyone wants to ask? Uh, I think Vinay, you have any question? Like you raised a hand. Uh, last one, last we can take. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. My question is that um, if a lady is working, right? If she is working as well as a homemaker, then which direction should she face? Like north or east? I and thank you yeah. so much for such a amazing and informative session thank you see basically basically a woman she is the person who gives he she is the person who can radiate light into the home whether it's taking care of the children whether it's taking care of the husband or whether it's taking care of the uh, eldest she is the person so i would always prefer her to sit closer to the best wall and look into the east understood thank you so much Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank All you so much. Right. How many is people there are there now? Is there any reference to height of where you stay? Like nowadays people stay in first floor, ground floor, first floor, or even in 20th floor. Any reference to height just for no, my In sense. terms of vastu, there is nothing. But in terms of convenience, mm. the lower floors mm. are better. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for, for the day. And uh, we are going to put this on YouTube. Yes, yes. When More or most likely it will be available on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, whatever you editing or whatever you need to do, you can do that. And sure, then uh, when you put it, you know, you please let me know. Sure, sir. Sure, I'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank 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 you. Thank